Hey everybody and welcome to the channel, my name is Hack, and in this video we'll be exploring the world of Cyberpunk 2077 and specifically my top picks for the best builds and playstyles in the game. Now much of this information is still brand new, but we do have tons and tons of gameplay footage, interviews, deep dives, written articles, and a lot more that I've dissected for you and reassembled back into some pretty cool builds to help you start planning your first playthrough right now. So first let's talk about what makes up a build in the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Basically the game doesn't feature any specific classes, but instead it uses a fluid specialization system, which means any character can be anyone and do anything depending on how you specialize your build. The five main components of any Cyberpunk 2077 build will include attributes, skills and perks, weapon, armor and clothing options, cyberware, and finally, your chosen life path. I'll give you a brief overview in this video about each of these systems to help you understand the build process better, but expect to see detailed guides for each component later on on my channel. Written guides for each are also already available on my Cyberpunk 2077 dedicated website, cyberpunkcentral.com, so go check it out. First, let's talk about attributes, which are the core stats of all character builds in Cyberpunk 2077. You begin the game by choosing specific starting values for all of your attributes during character creation, but you can also put additional points into attributes during the game as you level up. The five attributes are body, intelligence, reflexes, technical ability, and cool. Each attribute is then linked to several skill trees, which help you further define your character by improving those skills and choosing perks. For example, the reflexes attribute defines how good you can become using rifles, handguns, and blades, each of which have their own separate skill trees with further unique perks in each. Of course, weapons, armor, and even clothing will play a big role in defining your character's build in Cyberpunk 2077. As we all know, fashion is endgame, of course, and then your decision to use cyberware or not. Cyberware is basically special gear equipped directly within your body that can further amplify your abilities, giving you even greater strength, speed, reflexes, and much more. Finally, your chosen life path will have some impact on your cyberpunk build, though it likely will be just for, you know, role-playing flavor and for giving you access to some life path specific quest lines and dialogue options. Again, we'll be covering all of these fundamental systems in later videos, but now that you understand the basics, let's dive into the builds. Kicking off our list at number one is the ninja assassin, a deadly predator ready to dominate the districts of Night City. For attributes on this build, you'll want to focus on two key stats that being reflexes and cool. Under the reflexes attribute, we'll have the very important blades skill line, which will improve your prowess with handheld swords like katanas, knives, and even the powerful mantis blades cyberware. The perks within the blade skill tree have strong ninja based themes already, making them perfect for improving this build over time. For example, you've got unfair advantage, deals 10% more damage to enemies who have higher percentage of their max health than you, dragon strike, which causes your strong attacks to consume stacked bleeding effects and deal 15% bonus damage. There's Flight of the Sparrow, which reduces the stamina cost of all bladed attacks by 50%. There's the Slow and Steady perk, where your armor is increased by 30% while moving. Offensive Defensive, where your defensive attacks with blades deal 200% more damage. And the Ninja perk, where you can deflect attacks and perform dash attacks while using katanas. So in addition to focusing on reflexes, we're going to want to drop some points into the cool stat as well because it's here where we gain access to the stealth skill tree which is going to add a lot more mobility and of course deadly sneak attacks to our build some more useful perks for the ninja assassin in the stealth skill tree include toxicology this increases the duration of poisons then embrace the shadows this increases your health regeneration by 25 percent while you're sneaking crouching tiger increases your movement speed while sneaking by an additional 30 percent Attraction and Repulsion allows you to push enemies away after grappling them. Dagger Dealer lets you throw knives. Hidden Dragon lets you perform aerial takedowns. The Ninjutsu perk causes sneak attacks with melee weapons to deal 100% more damage, always guaranteeing a critical strike. And Hasty Retreat temporarily boosts movement speed by 50% when detected. In terms of weapons and gear, the primary weapon for this build will obviously be the katana. Now we know there will be several katanas available in the game from different weapon manufacturers. 
As I mentioned earlier, you can also do a Cyber Ninja version of this build, basically using the Mantis Blades. That's a piece of cyberware attached directly to your arms. Blades for arms, yeah, that's pretty interesting. For armor, I'd say light and medium style armor that enhances our stealth and mobility. It's going to be preferred over any other type of armor, even if it might have less defense, because as a stealth build, our goal will always be to slip in and out of the shadows, quickly taking down our enemy and retreating before they can fire off a single shot. Finally, your life path for this build, that choice is really up to you. But in my mind, the Ninja Assassin works best with a Corporal Life Path character. There's just something about a cleanly pressed suit and a sharp blade that I am looking forward to. Next up, we have the Street Brawler build, a balls to the wall fighter in your face melee build if you really want to dish out some pain. For attributes, this build will focus early on the body stat, which we already know passively increases your maximum health, your stamina, and other physical characteristics. The body stat also unlocks the appropriately named Street Brawler skill tree for this build, which focuses on pure brutal melee damage. For example, you got the Gorilla perk, this causes your critical hit damage to increase by 60% for 10 seconds after you kill an enemy. Equally important under the body attribute will be the athletics skill tree for this build, which further enhances our ability to perform physically in combat. Some great athletics perks for the Street Brawler are going to include regeneration. This slowly regenerates your health in combat. We've got Gladiator, which reduces your damage taken while blocking. Invincible increases your maximum health by 10%. The Superhero Landing reduces fall damage by 5%. For weapons, the idea is for this build to focus on melee weapons first, with some options for hand-to-hand -hand combat as well. Early on, we'll want to find basically the biggest, heaviest, two-handed weapon we can find. I'm thinking a hammer or something similar will be perfect. Armor options can be heavy, uh, though a medium or maybe even a light armor style may be equally as good for the added mobility, because remember that both mobility and defense can always be augmented with cyberware. Finally, for the life path of the street brawler, choosing a street kid makes the most sense to me from a thematic point of view. What better story than a kid from the streets becoming the king of Night City? Next up, let's talk about the Tech Sniper. This build is a master of guerrilla warfare. It can put down an enemy from unbelievable distances, around cover, and even through walls. Now, the primary stat for this build is going to be that reflexes attribute. And that's simply because reflexes gives us access to the rifle's skill tree and its accompanying perks. For example, the Punisher perk removes weapon sway for 10 seconds after killing an enemy. And for even extra weapon power, some attribute points put into technical ability that's going to make this build really stand out. The technical stat is linked to the crafting skill line, which will let us upgrade our weapons through perks like R&D. This enables you to upgrade your items to legendary quality. The technical ability stat is also linked to the engineering skill tree. This is going to let us further refine our weapon skills with perks like crazy science. This increases your tech weapon damage by 25%. And speaking of weapons, this is where the Tech Sniper will have multiple amazing build options. First, yes, there is an entire class of tech weapons. We know from previous trailers, these weapons are extremely powerful. For example, you can charge up electromagnetic rounds that pierce through concrete walls. We also have access to a separate class of smart weapons that utilize missile-guided technology to automatically seek and target enemies on the battlefield. In terms of cyberware options, I think ocular implants like the Kuroshi Optic Scanner will most likely be pretty desirable on this build, as these can help with targeting enemies from a distance. We've also seen some abilities that can target enemies through walls, though this may require device hacking of things like security cameras in the area. Finally, your chosen life path for the build of course is up to you, but for me, the Nomad life path makes sense as that outdoor lifestyle and time spent out on the Badlands probably has given us plenty of time to practice our shot. Build number four on our list is definitely going to be a favorite for many players, and that's the strong solo build. Cyberpunk 2077's equivalent of Rambo or the Terminator. This build is going to focus on heavy weapons, shotguns, even rockets to maim and destroy everything in your path. Your primary attribute for going with a strong solo build is going to again be the body stat, similar to the Street Brawler build we saw previously as this will unlock higher health, stamina, physical characteristics of the build, 
In addition though, the body stat leads to the Annihilation skill tree, and this skill line with its perks is designed specifically for heavy weapons and shotguns. For example, we have a Redacted perk in the Annihilation skill tree which reduces our weapon recoil by 50%, for six seconds. In addition, we'll also want to focus heavily on the athletic skill tree. One absolutely essential perk for this heavy weapons build is going to be the pack mule perk, which doubles our current carrying capacity, and the multitasker perk, which lets you shoot while sprinting, sliding, jumping at the same time. And then the transporter perk, this lets you shoot and sprint while carrying a body, perhaps as a human shield. And then remember, with enough athletic skill, uh, you can rip turrets directly off their base and use them as your own weapon. Now, as for weapons and armor, the tech weapons I mentioned earlier will likely be a favorite choice, but there's yet another class of weapons which I think will be a great option for a strong solo build, and that's power weapons like the Carnage Shotgun. These more closely resemble real-world weapons, but with the added benefit of being able to ricochet bullets off of nearby surfaces to destroy targets hiding behind cover. In terms of armor, we'll definitely want as much protection as possible, so the heavier the better, and this can likely be amplified further with subdermal plating, basically cyberware that acts like armor underneath your skin. We may also be able to augment our running and jumping, uh, as we know there is specific cyberware just for legs, so if you want that unstoppable Terminator feeling, this build is definitely for you. Finally, for Life Path, I would probably go with the Corporal Life Path for this specific build. It just feels like a good fit for a former corporate protection agent, maybe gone rogue, ready to tear down corporations from the inside. Number five on our list is going to be the Netrunner build. Netrunners in the world of Cyberpunk 2077 are the elite hackers of Night City, able to bend the will of surrounding technologies to do their bidding, often with deadly effects. The developers seem to be a big fan of this particular playstyle, as we know many trailers feature several unique and grim ways you can defeat your enemies without firing a single shot, simply by hacking into their surroundings or even their own bodies. And the key attribute for the Netrunner build is going to be intelligence. The intelligence stat here leads us to two main skill trees related to hacking. That is device hacking and target hacking. Now just like you'd imagine, device hacking lets you interact with the world around you in unique ways, often allowing you to progress through quests and areas in the world without using traditional weapons. This can take some time, so perks which allow us to hack into devices more quickly and effectively would be my first choice here. For example, we have the transmigration perk. This increases your breach time protocols by 25%. And that brings us next to target hacking, which is a separate skill tree and set of perks designed to help you hack into enemies from afar. For example, you can hack directly into an enemy's cyberware implants or make a tech grenade explode in their pocket. From what we can tell from early trailers, there are cooldowns and memory resource mechanics involved in hacking. So perks in the skill tree like Memory Master will be quite useful. You can see this increases your memory regeneration speed by 25%. Again, memory is going to be basically a resource that lets you complete hacking abilities. Finally, if you want to avoid combat completely as a net runner, you'll definitely want to use the stealth skill tree as we did on the Ninja Assassin build. This of course means you will need to invest into the cool attribute to make this build even more undetectable. For weapons, there's actually a Netrunner themed weapon in Cyberpunk 2077 that we know of already. That's the Nanowire. It's this kind of whip-like weapon which can slice and dice enemies into shreds. Seems like a great option. We may also want to pick up some weapons which don't draw attention to ourselves, like a simple silenced pistol, for example. We'll definitely want to focus on mobility and stealth for this build. So some basic light armor should be fine. Perhaps even some clothing which helps us blend in with Night City's everyday citizens. Something that lets us move around between enemies and objectives undetected. Now in terms of cyberware, we'll need to invest heavily into operating systems. Now this is likely going to be expensive, but better operating systems will unlock better hacking abilities for our Netrunner, as well as help with our memory management and regeneration. Any life path can be a net runner, but I like both Corpo and Street Kid for this particular build. Corpos, of course, would have access to the best tech with access to corporate gear and software. Well, I think Street Kids, it just makes sense. They'll have this innate sense for using technology in Night City, and they could also be highly skilled net runners. Build number six on our list. This is one of my personal favorites, and that's the Gun Fu Expert. With Gun Fu, we are of course focusing on handguns, pistols, with some added melee or maybe even martial arts combat for flavor. Now luckily handguns do have their own specialized skill tree in Cyberpunk 2077, which connects to the reflexes attribute. 
so you'll want to invest heavily in reflexes when starting out. This will let us focus on aim shots to specific body parts for extra damage and huge critical damage bonuses. You can also apparently slow down time to make it even easier to land your shots, though this may be related to cyberware specifically. Just remember this build is all about that critical damage. For example, in the handgun skill tree, we have a redacted perk here where landing a critical hit will also give us armor for 20 seconds. Placing some points into the body attribute also makes sense for this build, as we'll want to use the athletic skill line for the greater mobility and combat prowess. Like the multitask perk which we saw before, this lets us shoot while running and jumping, and hard mf -er, which increases our armor and resistances at the beginning of combat. The main focus of this build in terms of weapons will of course be handguns, and I'm leaning towards smart weapons for that extra precision. Now as a backup, using our bare hands may be enough, especially with a few added cyberware pieces for increased damage and durability, but we can also add melee weapons or swords to this build as a backup. Finally, in terms of that life path choice for the build, I will be playing a similar setup myself using the Nomad life path as this probably has like the best backstory I'd imagine for a gunslinger type of character due to their starting location in the Badlands. Last but not least, the number 7 build on our list is the Engineer, a shotgun toting, grenade chucking, tech weapon specialist. For this build, you will definitely want significant attribute points dropped into the technical ability stat for both the crafting and engineering skill trees, which we talked about earlier. Engineering specifically will be a huge part of this build with lots of perks dedicated to grenades. For example, blast shielding reduces explosion damage taken by 10%. Shrapnel adds 20 additional damage to all of your previous effects. Grenade deer, you can see the blast radius of grenades and it can't touch this perk makes you immune to the damage dealt by your own grenade. That's definitely going to be helpful. Now we'll also be able to scrap for parts to build better equipment of our own with perks like mech looter. This perk enables you to loot scrap from drones, robots, and mechs. And then you also get 30% chance to find weapon parts. And the reverse engineering perk allows you to remove weapon mods. We we'll wanna put some points into the body attribute as well for that annihilation skill tree to power our shotguns as this seems to be like an effective way to preemptively trigger explosions and grenades when your enemy at least expects it. As far as weapons, using tech weapons again seems to be the way to go, as the tech shotgun can punch through walls very effectively and also will be empowered further by that crazy science perk from the engineering skill tree. In terms of armor as an engineer, we can actually build our own using the crafting system, so I'm really looking forward to see what kinds of tech-specific armor will be available to build and craft. And of course, any life path option is possible here, but for role playing, that kind of crafty, tinkerer style build, Nomad seems to be the way to go, as we know that working on cars is part of their base game story. And with that, that's going to wrap up our video going over my picks for the best builds in Cyberpunk 2077. If you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to crush that like button. Let me know what type of build you'll be playing down in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe right here for more Cyberpunk 2077 content in the future. For all things Cyberpunk, including written guides and articles on attributes, skills, weapons, vehicles, districts, and much more, make sure to check out cyberpunkcentral.com. Thank you all again for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next video.